five. Good morning, team. Hope everyone had a super awesome weekend here. I want to make just a quick podcast this morning, really talking about some actionable uh, steps that you can take immediately to move towards your ideal self. And I think this is something relevant, even if you are already down 20 pounds, already seeing your body transform. I think that this can also be beneficial to you, whether you're there or you're just starting and you're like, oh my gosh, I got to do something. The kids are going back to school. I just need to do something, right? This can be a really good first step. And I think the reason whether you're starting or whether you're uh, already say working towards advanced, this could be beneficial is because we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. Uh, and a lot of the things that we know to do, sometimes we just need to be reminded, oh yeah, that's right. I have to do that. It's important for my life. And then also just maybe we need some easier actions to put behind it. So without further ado, let's hop right in. Today, we're just going to talk about how to increase your water intake. More importantly, how to do it in a really easy way that allows you to not have to focus too much on willpower and just have it start becoming a part of every day, right? So let's hop in. Here we go. Starting off, why should we drink water? Well, imagine there was one action that you could take that could help you stay satisfied and feel fuller longer, make your skin look younger, help your digestive system so you can stay regular and shrink your midsection and improve your physical performance, giving you more energy and improve your brain function and to help you reduce frequency of headaches. And it's free for the most part. That's water, right? So we're just going to go over three simple actions that you can put into place. If you don't already have these in place, make sure you add them in and they can definitely help you get going in the right direction. And if you want some other ideas as well. Uh, right now I'm sharing this from my foundational sustainable habits guide, where there's two other habits in here that we focus on. If you want to check this out for yourself or just have this as a resource, you can go into the description and download it. Uh, yours free. <laughs> so as we talk about why water, what are the habits? Well, the first thing really simply is just to have it available. Right. If we're thinking about it, I mean, even just following what I've written here, human nature supports the path of least resistance. If we can have the water at your desk during the workday, you have a much higher likelihood to drink it. Grab at least a 35 ounce bottle to avoid frequent fill ups. So let's unpack that really quick. If you're an RN in in the hospital setting, I'm very familiar that they do not allow you to have water at the nurse's station. My best advice for that. And I know this might seem funny, um, especially because I know RNs like to follow the rules. Um, I've never seen an RN get fired because they brought water to the nurse's station. So what I found is that this could be a classic example of it's better to ask for forgiveness and permission. Uh, do your best to hide it. <laughs> do your best to put, you could put it, not maybe not at the nurse's station, you could put it two feet, you know, you just, you find a way to make it somewhat accessible so that you can drink it. Uh, Cause otherwise, yeah, I mean, you're just not going to drink it if it's not available. It's so easy to have the day go through. And then you're in this position where, oh man, I didn't drink any water. So having it available is huge. The, the thing here that I would just recommend is be as resourceful as possible. If you are working, you know, in the hospital setting, again, just, do your best to have it somewhere that the, uh, that I'll say doesn't get you fired, <laughs> which I have never seen happen yet. 400 RNs. I haven't seen it happen yet. So maybe be the first, but I doubt it. <laughs> so number two, uh, set alarms on your phone to drink. A lot of the time I'll just follow this first and then we'll talk about it. It may sound funny at first, but if you're struggling to remember to drink water, this can be a great solution. After a week, you can reduce or eliminate the reminders altogether. Step-by-step, step, set alarms in your phone every hour, which generally I don't say every hour, usually it's every two to three, uh, for 10 to 14 hours during the day. Start your first alarm, alarm one hour after waking up. In the description, write, drink one-tenth of the amount of water you should be drinking for the day. And if you're thinking about where do I start with how much water I should drink, I mean, you want to try to get to about half your body weight in ounces or 
you know, you could say trying to move up to eventually your goal weight in ounces, which would pretty much be a gallon of water per day. But the most important thing that I would recommend is just making an improvement from where you are. If we're thinking, you know, kind of shifting a little bit into human psychology and creating a positive feedback loop, one of the reasons that we, if you think about all the times that you stopped doing healthy habits in the past, it's generally because of something mental, right? And the mental part that you can control so strongly is, do you feel, are you rewarded for the actions you're taking or are you uh, essentially caused pain? And I know that sounds funny, but you're doing it to yourself all the time unknowingly. Here's an example. If you say, I'm going to start drinking a gallon of water a day and you do it for a week. And then week two, you only drink 80 ounces a day. Do you feel great? Because, wow, I'm drinking all of this extra water than I was two weeks ago. Or do you feel like a failure because you're falling short of your goal? Well, logically, we would all say, well, of course, I'd feel fine because I'm doing more than I was doing before. But usually human nature doesn't work that way. Usually we see a goal and we see where we are. And even though absolutely three weeks ago, we're doing more today than we were before, we still feel less than. And because of that negative emotion, we tend to cope with it. And then that starts us on a guilt cycle and we feel bad and we stop. So my recommendation is start at a amount that you can comfortably do and then increase it when you're consistently doing it or just start with a goal and then be an overachiever and feel good about it. And then when you're doing that for two weeks, then increase the amount, right? Uh, you'll hear me say a lot that the way that you sustainably get to your goal isn't by necessarily changing the actions you're doing, but it's the wrapper in which you are putting these actions into place, right? Uh, so that it supports long-term habit change in human psychology, right? So let's keep going. Mumbo jumbo. <laughs> so if you're thinking about setting these alarms, I recommend doing it like every two to three hours or just like fit, fit into your lifestyle, right? Like if you know, maybe it does make sense for you to do it every hour so that you drink less water per alarm or you do it every two, th two to three hours or you start every hour and then you move to every two hours and so on and so forth. Test and iterate. That's one of the things that we talk about with our clients a lot and we put into place is we, we have a hypothesis. This will work. This will be sustainable. This will get results. And then depending on what happens, we iterate. And that's ultimately how you build something that's really good for you, right? And you'll hear me say this a hundred times. Results are easy. Sustainability is hard. So you want to make sure that you have sustainability as a core pillar of what you're doing. All right. And uh, that's important. And I'll just say that one of the reasons this is important too is because we live in a distraction culture. So like you always have notifications going off on your phone. If you haven't turned notifications off on your phone yet for like social media and whatnot, except this group uh, and your coach, I recommend it um, because we're just inundated with so much information that we become almost like catatonic. We become sto uh, just like zombies. To an extent. So if you want your brain to work better, in my opinion, uh, stop with so much input uh, that you're not controlling. You want good input going into your brain, but not input that you're not willingly putting into your brain. Uh, and we, we talk about more about that in other podcasts. Uh, let's hit the last one here. Put flavoring in your water. I, I know a lot of people, when they start their transformation, they're thinking all or nothing, right? So they think, okay, I have to do everything 100% healthy from forever, for, from here on out. And my recommendation to that is don't do that. <laughs> Instead, focus on improvement. I'll give you an example. I have, I will had, I had a client of mine and I won't say her name just because she, you know, feels embarrassed about it. But when she first started, she was drinking almost two liters of Coke a day. So as we went into week two, we didn't, or into week one, we did not say remove all the Coke because if we remove the Coke, you know, we're always as, as humans, we're always wired to go towards pleasure and away from pain. How long do you think if she's getting tremendous pleasure from drinking Coke and I take that away from her, how long do you think she's going to stick with me? And when I say stick with me, I don't necessarily mean as a client, I just mean stick on the plan. 
probably not that long. And if we're thinking about sustainability, it's small, measurable changes. So as we go into week one, we didn't even touch the Coke. And the reason we didn't touch the Coke was because for her, she had a very visceral reaction to when I asked, hey, if we were to go from a liter and a half to like one liter, and you could just see on Zoom, she like, she was like, no, not gonna happen. <laughs> so if I try to do that first, may not be, may not be it. But what we can do, and one of the philosophies that we follow is increase, don't decrease. So instead of thinking about taking things away, it's like, well, okay, could you add other stuff in? What do you mean? Well, you know, do you like Diet Coke? And it's like, I hate Diet Coke. Okay, cool. Well, is there any diet soda that you like? I like orange soda, diet orange soda. Okay, fair enough. Without thinking about reducing your, your full sugar Coca-Cola, would you be able to start drinking half a liter of orange so diet orange soda per day? Yeah, I could do that. And it didn't equal pain for her. Cool. Guess what happened? The following week, she drank a liter and like a quarter, I think. I believe it was, give or take, of Coca-Cola. Now, you might say, yeah, but she's, she's just replacing evil with evil, right? <laughs> Which I don't believe, but you're, you know, you're replacing uh, something that's not good for you with something else that's not good for you. But think of it like the lesser of two evils. And you have to meet people where they are. Because like if I could have somebody drink diet soda, even though there's, you know, aspartame and whatever else in there, some artificial sweeteners, is that better than 80 extra grams of sugar that they'd be having a day? Yes. So we do the lesser of two evils, right? So you, even if you're not maybe that extreme of a starting case, you can still benefit from that uh, mentality is that you do not have to go zero to a hundred because the problem with that, think about it like if you were riding a bike, if you were riding a bike and you were teaching your child, maybe even how to ride a bike or you were learning how to ride a bike. And the first thing they did <laughs> was after you like learned to like maybe balance a little bit and you had five minutes on the bike, they put, brought you to the tallest mountain, <laughs> the tallest hill in your city, and they just set you down the mountain. <laughs> what would happen? They would like get control for a little bit, but it would start to shake. And then eventually they'd gain so much speed that they would crash and burn. And that's what the majority of people do with this, except in, it doesn't take seconds. It takes weeks to crash and burn. So what I recommend is... Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Instead, learn how to ride your bike on a flat surface. And it's all relative. A flat surface for you might very well mean going from one liter of Coke a day and not thinking about decreasing it, but instead increasing other areas. I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you this as a food example as well. You know, if, if you have a, uh, if you cope emotionally with food, if you gain a lot of pleasure from eating specific types of food, do not think about reducing those foods right away. Just think about increasing certain other foods like protein and lean meat, right? As an example, but I, I'm digressing quite a bit. I just always wanna make sure that I'm giving you guys what you need. And you know, I, I really wanna make sure like the people in this group, I don't take it lightly that you're here. And I wanna make sure that you are gaining not only knowledge, but action steps that you can put into place to really transform your life. I'm very familiar with the idea. I'm well, very familiar with what happens when you change your body. It's the foundation of everything. So if you can change your body, you can change everything about your life. It's your vehicle at which you experience life. I really believe that. So hopefully this is helping. Uh, but the last thing, anyway, put flavoring in your water, even though you might say, oh, there's artificial sweeteners. Look, if you were gonna put artificial sweeteners in your water, uh, and it made you go from drinking 40 ounces of water a day to 80, worth it, <laughs> highly recommend it. And then eventually, yeah, you can move to drinking a gallon of water or more a day without uh, you know, any flavoring, but like you don't start there, you don't have to. Uh, but this is only if you need it. You may not even need flavoring in your water, but as you progress, try reducing the amount of ounces you drink with flavoring. Uh, we've seen clients start with a full gallon of peach raspberry Peach, I should say peach, peach raspberry neo, and months later be using little to none, right? So hopefully this helps. Hopefully this gives you just some quick actionable pieces that you can put into place to start towards your transformation. Again, just to put this into context for you, a lot of us 
a lot of us think in, and I'm, I'm victim of this as well. Like this is human nature. A lot of us think in weeks, uh, days, weeks, or maybe, maybe months. But the majority of us think about weight loss in weeks or, or days. And the problem with that is if you're not seeing super measurable success in a daily or weekly basis, then we tend to stop. But there's a catch 22, because if you do too much too quick, it's not sustainable. You also stop. The way that I've seen to be able to really make change last forever is to make it feel easy. Now, am I, am I saying that you shouldn't challenge yourself? No, of course not. You should challenge yourself. Yeah, for sure. But I am very aware that the majority of the people here have very, very hectic lives. You're an RN, right? You're high stress. You have a family. And I am aware that you probably don't want to commit more than 5% of your life towards this endeavor. So this idea of like committing every single day to like multiple hours a day towards this probably isn't realistic for the long term. If we're not going to do it forever, we probably shouldn't do it to start. That's my opinion. So, but the reason I, I talk about the, uh, the days and weeks is because if we looked out a year, like just for a moment, if you were to disconnect from the result and you were to just say, okay, I'm going to focus on putting a new action into place every week. And this new action is going to be something that will sizably, like, this will be a nice thing to get me to my goal. Okay. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. Like, let, let's say that for the first three weeks, you just focused on water, like those three things, water, moving your body and um, sleep. And you put an action, you put a goal in place. And if you achieve the goal the next week, then you add something on top. And if you did not achieve the goal, that's the goal again for this week. And you did that for an entire year. I mean, this is the philosophy that we follow with our clients. Even if only half of the time you added a new habit because the other half, you know, life was, you know, things didn't go as planned. If you stayed the course a year from now, you'd have 26 new habits helping you towards your body transformation. I can just about guarantee you there aren't really even 26 habits for you to do. I can think on two hands all the habits you need to transform your body. And we just talked about one of them. I mean, technically three of them, but one of them, which was water. All you need is 10 habits. If you put these 10 habits into place, you win. And you just got to do them consistently. But how do you do it consistently when all the excitement goes away and things feel boring? Well, you make it so easy that you, and you make it so easy and pleasurable that it creates very little pain for you to do these actions and, tr and tremendous pleasure from doing the actions so that you can do them forever. That's the game. That's how you win. So hopefully this is beneficial. I ramble, ramble too long, but if this is beneficial, guys, feel free to just drop a comment below, uh, drop a like, feel free to share it with someone, feel free to share it with a, with a, I don't know, with a person you love that needs to hear it. <laughs> but hopefully this has been good. I love making this content. Uh, because uh, every time I feel like I'm just speaking from the heart. So I want the best for you. I want, if you're listening to this now, I want the best for you. I want you to be able to live the life that you want to live. I know how much your life can improve when you take care of your physical body. It's a foundation for everything. So the good news is no matter how many times you've struggled in the past, how many times you started and failed, you can get to where you want to get to. I can assure you of that. So much love. See you guys soon. Feel free to drop some, some ideas, podcast ideas below as well.